let n be a positive integer and let this integral n equal um, the integral of log x to the power of n dx. So this is obviously a pretty crucial result just over here. That integral there, we're gonna use that. All right, prove that um, i n equals, and then you've got this result here. Now, when you look at this closely, um, you can see, I hope, that this has come from integration by parts. Um, it's got that kind of telltale sign, right, of um, you've got this here, oopsie daisy, um, you've got this here at the front, which has been integrated, and then you take away another integral, which is what happens when you do integration by parts. Part two is gonna say, we'll use that to find out this, and essentially this recurrence relation or this reduction formula that we're gonna prove in part one will allow us to see this, this power here. We can go from that to climb down to a two, down to a one, and then down to a zero, or in reverse order as you're about to see. Okay, so let's use integration by parts. This is question one C. Whoops, is he? Not use a laser pointer, that's not very helpful. Part C, let's form this integral. So, I've got i n equals the integral of log x to the power of n dx. All right, now I want to think about, okay, for part one, what is the appropriate u and what is the appropriate dv? Now, this is one of those cases where um, it looks like a product, log x times you know, itself a number of times, but the most easy way to break this apart is actually just to treat this entire thing as u. Because if I then say there's a one, let's just sneak this in here, there's a one, hanging in there, if I make that the dv, then it's very easy to integrate and it will introduce the uh, x term that you can see right here, right? This is gonna be the um, v du that you can see. This, this x will be the v, right? So therefore, I'm gonna um, write out here, let's designate u as, my, as the other part of the integrand, the log part, log x to the power of n, and that gives me a du on dx, which is equal to, uh, this is just chain rule, isn't it? So bring that power out the front, log x, reduce the power by one, and then multiply by the inside derivative, which in this case is one over x. So there's my u and du. Let's now do dv and v. So I said that I was gonna sneak in a one there, which means that when I integrate up, I'm gonna just get x. So this is gonna be part of my, um, yeah, my, my uv result that you can see in there. So I'm ready to do my integration by parts now. I can say therefore i n equals, okay, uh, here comes uv, so it's x log x to the n out the front, which is promising because that's what we needed uh, back over here in the question. And then what, I'm, what am I subtracting? Well, I'm going to subtract, you know how this works, um, it's gonna be v times du, but notice what's going on here. You can see this x that we've introduced in the v is going to cancel with this one over x that we introduced in the du. So um, I need to show this, by the way, because this is a uh, prove that question. So even though I'm, I'm noticing that, I'm still gonna write here in the next line, it's gonna be the integral of x, and then everything here comes along for the ride. Soup, with respect to x. Uh, but then, now that I've written that, I can go cancel, cancel, um, and if you look at this closely, you can see this uh, log x to the n minus one looks just like i to the i n, not i to the n, i sub n, um, except the power is different, so that's the i n minus one, I've climbed down, and then this n out here can come, um, it's just a constant coefficient, so I can remove it from the integral altogether. So that gives me x log x to the power of n minus, don't skip anything, integral of log x to the n minus one dx, which is equal to, uh, and this is the result that I was trying to prove, n i to the n minus one as required. Okay. Excellent. So then um, I'm now asked to use this, right? It says, hence find the exact value of this particular integral. Now you can see that the particular power that they've handed to us is three, right? Um, log x cubed, so I'm gonna to need to go from cubed down to squared, down to one, down to zero, okay? Now that's one way to do it. However, even though you can do it accurately, um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second, um, it's actually fairly error prone to do that, and you'll see why once I, I make an attempt at doing it, okay? Um, it's error prone because you sort of overload your working memory, so how can we try and reduce the amount of working memory that we're using um, while doing this question? Well, as I write down part two, 
What I'm going to do is instead of writing the question and sort of using that as my starting point, the integral from 1 to 2 of log x cubed, I'm actually going to start all the way down from the bottom with the simplest terms. So instead of I, you know, log x cubed, I'm going to start with log x to the zero. That's, that's as simple as I can do. It's trivial, in fact. Um, and then I'm going to build from zero up to one, two, and three. And that way I can simplify as I go, which reduces the working memory demands um, and uh, avoids the cognitive overload that can often happen. So let's have a go at doing this. I'm going to uh, start off with, whoopsie daisy, i zero. So by definition, um, it's going to be, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm going to do this from uh, 1 to 2 because the question specifies. So I'm going to integrate from 1 to 2 um, log x to the 0 dx. Okay, so I'm being slightly flexible there with my notation of um, i0 because um, the i n that was introduced up here doesn't have the boundaries there. You can see, whoops, right there, this is just an indefinite integral here, but I, I think it's going to be okay um, for me to use it in this fashion. So let's go ahead and start simplifying this, right? Um, this is the, let's zoom in a bit, there we go, integral from 1 to 2 of 1 with respect to x, because that's what happens when you raise stuff to the power of 0. Um, last I checked, the integral of 1 is just x from 1 to 2. Top bound, take away lower bound, bam, I've got 1. So that's about as nice as it gets for i0. suppose we shouldn't be surprised because it is a basic term. Let's go to i1. Okay, so from the earlier part of the question, um, part one, we can say this is the x log x to the power of whatever your value of n is, right? So in this case, it's going to be x log x, and it's log x to the power of one. So it's log x. Now, you might remember in integration by parts, when we use it, when you substitute through and if you have boundaries, that means this is actually uh, not just x log x as a random sort of, um, you know, with the variables intact, but it's actually just, the x's are just dummy variables. This is a definite integral, right? Or it's the end product of a definite integration process. So that's why you can see I've included these boundaries in here. And then I'm going to be subtracting um, n times i n minus 1, right? You can see that result right there. So the n in this case is 1, the i n minus 1 in this case is i 0, which thankfully I just evaluated. So therefore I can say, let's now start doing this, right? I can do my upper bound, take away my lower bound, so that'll be 2 log 2, take away 1 log 1, we'll return to that in a second, and then I'm going to subtract 1 times 1, because that was i 0, which we just worked out, we just determined earlier. Okay, uh, that leaves me with 2 log 2, log 1 is just 0, like what's the power that I raise a number to to get 1, 0, um, and then you've got that minus 1, so you can see this term has vanished and that minus 1 is just sort of tucked in there. Okay, I've built from, successfully from i0 to i1, let's just keep on going up the ladder. Um, so this is going to be now i2, it's equal to, alright, now just be careful, Going back to your occurrence relation, it's x log x to the power of n. My n is now 2, so therefore I'm going to have x log x, and that log x has been squared. Um, you can see this log x is just the power of 1, that's why I didn't need to write it, between 1 and 2, and then I'm going to subtract n lots of the previous um, i, right? So um, it's, it's 2 lots of i1, that's what I got in the previous line. Uh, so let's break the page there. Um, now let's do, uh, let's see here, I think I need a square bracket again. Uh, here comes the upper bound, so 2 log 2 squared, take away, and here comes the lower bound, 1 log 1 squared. Just be careful what you're substituting into what. <laughs> you're putting 2's into here, so you're like, is that power there or something I'm substituting into? No, it's part of the um, actual primitive. Um, and then I'm going to subtract 2 lots of i1, um, I know what i1 is, I had it here from the previous line, so I'm going to duplicate that, don't forget it needs some brackets. Okay, that's looking promising, uh, let's expand this, so I've got 2 outside of log 2 squared, just like we had before this log 1 term is just 0, so it is gone skis, and then uh, what have I got trailing on the end here, there's going to be 4 log 2, and then there's a double negative here, so I'm going to add two. All right. Fantastic. I've built up to i2. My last one now is to do i3 and then I'm up to this cube term, right? So I can say uh, i3 equals. All right. One more time with feeling. Uh, x log x, this time the power is three. I'm still going from one to two. I'm going to subtract n lots of the previous i. So that's three lots of i2. 
Whew, okay, here comes the upper bound. So it's gonna be two outside of log two cubed. Take away, I've done this enough times to say, oh, I know what, that's zero, because there's gonna be a log one term in there, right? Um, so that's done there. And then three lots of, and then you can see that I'm going to get the previous i, which I evaluated right there. I think I need a bit more space. Okay, fantastic. I'm so very close. Here comes the last line. Two of log two cubed. And then how many of the squares do I have? Six of those, log two squared. Um, watch for that double negative, so it's plus 12 of just the log twos. And then I'm gonna take away six. Take a breath, that's it. So. Uh, that's the result we needed to get for part two. I did promise I would show you what would happen if instead of building up from zero up to three, what would happen if you tried to climb down from three down to zero? Totally doable as well. Uh, in fact, it's actually fewer lines of working. However, because the reason why it's fewer lines of working is because in each line, you're doing more. So I'm not even gonna finish it because we know what the answer is, but let me just show you what it looks like. If I try to do this from I3, so I'm gonna say, all right, line one uh, is going to be the integral from one to two of log x all cubed dx. And let's see how far we can get before you start to realize, whoa, this is becoming a mess. All right, I go and I refer to um, the recurrence relation right here. So I'm already jumping in at three. I'm jumping in from the top of the ladder, right? And I'm climbing down. So therefore I'm gonna say, well, this is going to be x log x cubed from one to two. So you'll recognize this, we just did this, right? And then I'm going to have to subtract uh, n lots of three i n minus one. Now, uh, I don't know what i n minus one is because I'm climbing down, I don't know anything, right? So I just have to say, well, what's i two in this case, which I haven't evaluated. So I'm gonna write in what i two is now by definition. It's gonna be the integral from one to two of log x all squared with respect to x, okay? Now at this point you're like, this, is not, this doesn't seem too bad, Mr. Wheel. Like I feel like I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did before. One more line and then I think you're gonna see it, okay? Um, all right, so I've got, I've got this here, I better start expanding that, right? So uh, what am I gonna get? Here comes the lower bound, so it'll be two log two cubed minus one log one also cubed, that's done. And then I look at this bit and I'm like, hmm, okay, I don't know how to integrate this but I can climb down the next rung of the ladder. So I can have that minus three out the front, and then I can say, well, let's just do this whole thing again, right? I'm gonna put even bigger brackets, and then I'm gonna use the recurrence relation another time for n equals two. So that's gonna be, take a breath, x log x squared uh, from one to two, take away, n lots of, so this n is two, and then I'm integrating and I've climbed down one step. So, oops, it's from one to two, uh, and that's going to be to the power of one. So I'll just, I guess I'll just leave that with respect to x, and then I can close my curly brace. Okay, are you starting to see why this is a method that works um, if you can do your algebra perfectly and your calculus perfectly, but you're, you're sort of asking to make errors. Okay, let me explain what I mean. We are doing a lot of things at once, right? This is a recipe kind of for disaster. We are expanding this and sort of evaluating this, and at the same time, we are making this turn into something much larger, and I'm gonna have to do it again, right? You can see this is I1. I'm gonna need to climb down one more step to get to I0. So you can see this line here is just getting longer and longer and longer as I unfold each of the reduction formulas, um, and it gets, you know, each, each single integral turns into um, the two components that come from integration by parts. So it's getting bigger, and at the same time, I'm also trying to do all these other bits, right? Not to mention, see this minus three that applies here? It applies to everything inside the bracket. So it applies to this definite integral I'm about to evaluate. It also applies to this minus two, so that's gonna be a plus six in the end, which you can see here, you can see why it does, it is supposed to be a plus six. But look, you're just adding more minus signs and you're nesting your brackets further and further. I've got curly braces, for goodness sake. So this line here is gonna get worse. Whereas you could see as we built up here, even though there was still more to consider, I already simplified I2 at this point. I, I had it down to its simplest form. So all I had to do was multiply it once by minus three and off I went, right? And the same thing happened further and further along. I could simplify as I went and I was only considering I0 in this case. I was only considering I1 and so on. 
Whereas here, um, even though you absolutely can do it and you'll of course get the same solution, you have to be so cautious because it's easy for your errors to creep in just because you're keeping, you're adding more and more things into your brain. So you have to be quite cautious. That's why this method is probably less desirable and the students who did it this way, building from zero up to three, generally experienced much more success.